A much loved and enigmatic creature, puffins are wildly regarded as the cutest birds on earth and are one of the most iconic seabirds. Their white plumage and large orange beaks make them look a cross between a duck and a penguin, but these birds are their own kind. They're sometimes known as the sea parrot or the clown of the sea because of their colorful and comical appearance. They waddle around in a characterful fashion and make the strangest of noises. They're charming animals and one of Britain's most loved birds. Hi guys, welcome to Animal Educate. My name's Abby and today we're going to be diving into the wonderful world of puffins. The puffin is a small seabird which is closely related to other orcs like the guillemot. There's four different species of puffin all inhabiting the colder conditions of the northern Atlantic. You have the Atlantic puffin, the tuft puffin, the horned puffin, and the rhinoceros auklet. It's the Atlantic puffin that's found in the UK. They're best known for their brightly coloured triangular beaks and they're one of the most distinctive seabirds. Red runs down the entire length and across the tip, with the base being of a more greyish colour. The bill of the puffin is more brightly coloured during the warmer breeding season, becoming duller as they shed for the colder winter months. Puffins are quite small and they have quite a thick black and white plumage which helps to keep them warm. They have black necks, backs and wings with white underparts and whitish feathers on each side of their face. In the winter their feet and their legs are yellow and then during breeding season they're a brighter orange colour. Males are usually just a bit bigger than females. If they're side by side and you have a keen eye you'll probably be able to tell the difference. The usual length of the Atlantic puffin is about 28 to 30 centimetres and their weight is generally about 400 to 500 grams. Puffins make loud growling sounds and it's usually from underground so it can sound like a very low rumbling chainsaw. They make their homes along the North Atlantic coast but 60% of the Atlantic puffin population is in Iceland. The Atlantic puffin is the only puffin that lives in the Atlantic Ocean. Their habitat is grassy coastal cliffs that aren't too steep, but they also like their rocky coastal waters. So they're found on the rocky coast during the breeding season and then out to open sea during the non-breeding season. Like many species of orc, the puffin is a highly sociable animal and they can be found in colonies as big as 2 million individuals. Even when they're out to sea feeding and hunting, they're known to stick together and form rafts. This ensures that they're more protected from predators. Puffins are incredibly fast and they're able to launch themselves at great speed from the land or the water. The puffin is an amazing swimmer, very, very agile, and they're known to dive for up to 60 meters and for about two minutes at a time. The average dive time is about 20 seconds. Launching from land and sea may not be an issue, but when it comes to landing, it's a whole different story. Puffins are well known for their crash landings. During the colder winter months, the puffins will spend most of their time out to sea. Sometimes they'll swim miles from land before returning back to the cliffs for the warmer months for breeding. Puffins are really fast. They can fly to speeds of 55 miles per hour with their wings beating three to 400 times a minute. They use body movements to communicate to each other in a variety of situations. If a puffin is walking quite rapidly with their head low, that's called a low profile walk. What that puffin is basically saying is, I'm passing through and I don't want any trouble because they could be passing another puffin's territory. It's particularly useful if it's a very large crowded colony. 
An aggressive encounter between two puffins usually would begin with gaping. The puffins will usually puff themselves up to make their bodies look bigger and I guess more intimidating, but their mouths will be slightly open and the more open the mouth is, the more upset that puffin is. The puffin may also stamp their foot to show their displeasure. If that encounter escalates into a fight, they'll lock beaks and what they'll do is try and topple each other over, kind of like a wrestling match. This fight will attract a crowd so other puffins will gather around and watch. Puffins will get together out in the ocean before they go back to the island and then when they get back to the island, they may perform something called billing. This is when they rub their beaks together. The male uses his bill or feet to dig a nesting burrow on an ocean cliff. It might also be made in a rocky crevice, but it's lined with grass. Burrows shelter the chicks from bad weather, but also other predators like seagulls. Breeding's between April and July, and the female lays one singular egg. The male and the female will both incubate this egg. They'll tuck it under their wing and they'll lean against it. The egg will hatch in about 40 days and the male and female will both continue to take care of the puffling. Puffins don't mate for life, not exclusively, but actually they're quite monogamous for the animal world. They live quite long lives for birds, sometimes more than two decades. The oldest known puffin is about 36. Despite the fact that puffins are omnivores, their diets are quite carnivorous. It's got quite a bit of variety, but primarily they'll eat small fish, sand eels, herring. Sometimes this is supplemented with plankton and crustaceans. They hunt for these under the surface of the water. Their uniquely shaped beaks are designed for carrying fish thanks to a layer of spines that are found on the upper part of the beak and on their tongue. This means they're able to continue fishing without losing any of the catch that they have already stored. The adult Atlantic puffin can carry as many as 30 fish in their beak. Puffins help people by acting as indicators for ocean health, especially when it comes to overfishing. They indicate the abundance of fish by the numbers they bring back to their chicks. Obviously, if overfishing depletes the fish populations, that means they're gonna bring back less fish. Puffins are also really important predators of small fish and marine invertebrates in the areas that they live. The puffin is included on the red list of UK birds of conservation concern after being listed as vulnerable on the IUCN red list. It's very vulnerable to adverse changes in the environment because the breeding population is concentrated to a small number of sites. There's also been large population declines across its European range. Although puffins are small, they have fewer native predators, and this is because they nest high on the cliffs and they burrow at least three foot underground. This means that gulls, hawks, foxes, and eagles are probably the most common land predator when it comes to adult puffins and their young. In areas that are close to human habitation, they're preyed upon by domestic cats and dogs, and rats will often target their valuable eggs. Out to sea, they're also preyed upon by larger predators like sharks, larger birds, and usually animals that are competing for the same food. The main threat the puffin faces today are human beings and the increasing activities that are having an impact on their natural environments. Since human beings have inhabited the northerly regions, they've hunted the puffin for their meat and their eggs. They're actually considered a delicacy in some countries, particularly Iceland and the Faroe Islands. They flavour porridge. Populations began to drastically suffer, leading to the extinction of many puffin colonies across the Northern Hemisphere. We've also disturbed their natural habitat with over-tourism and increasing coastal development. There's a massive impact from fishing, which obviously impacts the puffin's natural prey. Oil spills are a huge problem. 
In some regions, puffins have completely disappeared where they were once found abundantly. Warming seas from climate change has resulted in a shift in the distribution of cold water fish which puffins prey on. This means that the number of successful chicks to fledge has declined. All of these threats put puffins at risk because of their low reproductive rates and because of the fact that they breed in concentrated colonies. They're working towards better protection of puffin marine habitats in the UK. They're working towards better management of fisheries that impact puffin prey. They're combating marine litter that threatens seabirds like the puffin. How can you help puffins? Either cut out fish completely from your diet or ensure that you only ever buy seafood that has been sustainably caught. One way to lessen your impact on puffins and many other species is to stop using single-use plastic such as straws, plastic bottles in carrier bags. It's estimated that by 2050 there will be more plastic in our seas than fish. Puffins, as with many other seabirds, have been seen feeding their chicks with pieces of plastic, believing it to be food. If you want to go one step further, you could even organise a clean-up of your local beach. We must all do our bit by reducing our carbon footprint. There are many things that each of us can do, from car sharing and holidaying closer to home, to tree planting and switching to a green energy supplier. This will help to combat climate change. Adopt a puffin and donate to an organisation that works to protect puffins and other seabirds. Educate yourself and other people on puffin conservation and help spread the word. Education is key. Hey guys, that's it for today. I really hope you've enjoyed the episode about puffins. Hopefully you know more about them. But more importantly, you know how to help them. If you've enjoyed the episode, please do give us a like and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you have any thoughts about today's episode, please do comment below. Love to hear from you. Until next time.